Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. We're going to talk about ideal versus real gases, uh, otherwise known as when gases behave badly. So first we need to discuss um, what ideal gases are. Um, ideal gases are, uh, are gases that behave uh, exactly as they should under every single circumstance. Okay? So ideal gases have the properties of taking up no volume. Okay? So uh, they take up no volume. And remember, when we're talking about volume, volume is the space. Okay? Now we know that real gases um, do take up of a, of a volume. Okay, we, uh, we took a paper towel, we put it in the bottom of a beaker, we uh, turned it upside down and put it into a beaker of water, and I'm going to describe that there. So we had a beaker upside down, there were some paper towels in it, and we put this beaker completely underneath the water, and this paper towel um, stayed dry. So we know that real gases do take up space, ideal gases do not. Okay. Um, Ideal gases, we're going to assume that there's no attractive forces. Okay, No attractive forces between the particles. We know that real gases do have attractive forces in certain circumstances. Um, for instance, when we, uh, when we take uh, oxygen and we condense it uh, down and compress it so that uh, we can fill up our scuba tanks and uh, also for propane gas grills. So real gases do have attractive forces, ideal gases do not. Okay. Also with ideal gases, when the gas particles bang against each other, um, we're going to assume no loss of energy. Okay. No loss of energy. Um, we're basically going to assume that these gas particles, their collisions are elastic. Okay. Um, so that, these are the three properties of ideal gases, and, and we know that they differ from real gases. Now, what we want to think about is how could we take um, real gases and make them behave badly? And it has to do with attractive forces. So what we want to think about is how could we in, increase the chance of attractive forces between these real gases, okay? And this is when you know, gases behave badly, okay? Gases behave badly when we can increase the attractive forces, okay? So if we want to think about gas particles, gas particles basically are, have a lot of space between them. Uh, they're sort of moving in sort of random directions, okay? Uh, they might hit the walls of the container, uh, they might hit each other, and what we want to think about is how could we um, take these gas particles in, and increase their attractive force, because right now they don't have very much attractive force between them. So uh, one thing that we can do is take these gases and put them in a much smaller container. Okay. So when we do that, uh, we're going to say that it's going to be a small volume. And when we decrease the volume of a gas, we increase the pressure. So small volume, high pressure, that's when we could, that's when we could increase the attractive forces between them. Okay? So at high pressure, these gas particles are in such close contact with each other, um, they are going to have a chance of increasing their attractive forces. Okay? Um, the other thing that we could do with these gas particles, um, we could decrease the temperature. Okay, and in fact, it's not only decreasing the temperature, but really, really low temperatures. You know, when you approach absolute zero. Okay, absolute zero. Absolute zero, which we know as being zero Kelvin. Okay, So kind of like if we think about gas particles as bumper cars, uh, when, when your bumper car is moving really, really fast and you bang into somebody, you bounce off. And uh, when you're moving really, really slow, like right at the end of the game, when the power goes off, you're moving really, really slowly. And when your bumper cars hit each other, um, 
they just sort of stay right next to each other. And when the gas particles are more in contact with each other, that's when they can um, have some more attractive forces. Okay? So when, when do gases behave badly? When do real gases not behave ideally? At high pressure and really, really low temperature. So really, really low temperature when you're approaching absolute zero and also high pressure. Okay? Now, we talk about, when we do our calculations and so forth, what we want to think about is, um, you know, how could a chemist use all the different factors that can, uh, that can affect um, a gas particle? How can we put that all into one uh, equation? So we know that pressure, temperature, um, and volume all have a all, all play a factor in, in how gas particles behave. Um, and also, what if we increase the number of gas particles in our container? So what we have is uh, an equation that um, incorporates all those ideas, and it's called the ideal gas law. All right. And the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. Okay. And so uh, we know that P is pressure. V is volume. N is moles. Um, R is a, is a gas constant. Okay, just going to be a number that we need to, um, to keep track of. And then T is temperature, and as always, temperature always has to be converted into Kelvin. Okay, and remember, Kelvin equals 273 plus your degree Celsius. Okay, now, a couple things real important about uh, the ideal gas law are the units. Okay. So pressure units can be three different units. And we definitely need to pay attention to it. Um, so our pressure units can be um, atmospheres. They can be millimeters of mercury. Um, and then they can also be kilopascals. Okay, so we definitely have to pay attention to this. Uh, the unit of pressure will determine which gas constant we use. Volume is always going to be in liters. Um, if you're ever given a, a problem where they're in milliliters, remember there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So you might have to do that conversion. Our gas constant, like I mentioned, has to do with the, um, the unit of pressure. So our, your gas constant R can be 0 0.0821. And it's got some crazy units. If it's in um, atmospheres, this is our number. And the units are atmospheres, liters, over mole Kelvin. If our gas constant, excuse me, if our pressure is in millimeters of mercury, okay, it's going to be 62.4 millimeters of mercury liters over mole Kelvin. And our last gas constant, if our is 8.31. And that's if our pressure is in kilopascals. Okay. Now, when you're looking at problems that involve um, uh, all the different components of a gas, you're really going to be looking at the ideal gas law, where you have one pressure, one volume, uh, moles, and temperature. And remember, R is just a constant. It's a number. Um, yes, the units are weird, but you really don't have to worry about that when you're doing your calculations. You're going to choose the appropriate R value, choose the appropriate gas constant based on the unit of pressure. You take a look at these units. The only way that um, all these different R values are different, why we have different numbers, is because the unit of pressure is different. Okay. Um, thanks very much for watching. Good luck on your problems.